Good morning, friends, and welcome to our sermon service this morning. My name is Raymond. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a Methodist minister ministering within the Methodist Church of Southern Africa, and I find myself on the West Rand of Johannesburg. I'm currently servicing the Nortevel, Cruisedorp, and Princess Societies of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa, and I greet you in the name of Christ. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And I hear you saying to me, and also with you, Raymond, as we gather this morning, I want to encourage you to use the, the feedback and the comments on our YouTube channel, as well as on our Facebook pages. Uh, just comment, let us know that you hear and any questions that you may have. But friends, we gather around the Word of God this morning as we gather as brothers and sisters from the spaces in which we find ourselves. So let's dive into our service as we get going with our opening prayer. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we give you thanks and praise that as we gather this morning as your children, you are with us. That as we gather around your, your holy scriptures, that you would speak to us through them this morning as well. Father, you know the circumstances and the situations that we find ourselves under this national lockdown. And we ask that you'd speak light, words of life and hope into each and every one of us. That we would encounter you, and as we do, that you would continue to heal and transform us. So, Father, be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name, now and always. Amen. Friends, our readings this morning come from the New Testament. I'm going to be reading firstly from Acts 1, verses 6 to 14, and then I'm going to be reading from John 17, 1 to 11. I'll give you a moment if you have a Bible nearby to, to turn to them. First, we're going to be reading from Acts 1. Alternatively, you can follow with me on the screen or use the link that's in the description to this live stream video, as well as in our audio recording. So let's dive straight into our readings. Acts 1, verses 6 to 14. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the time or date the Father is set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the woman and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. This brings us to our reading from the Gospel of John. And I'm going to be reading John 17, verses 1 to 11. I'll we'll give you a moment to get, get there in your Bibles, if you're getting your Bibles. That's John 17, verses 1 to 11. And it reads as follows. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They are yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but, but for those you have given me. For they are yours. 
All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. The glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, as we come to your holy scriptures this morning, we ask that you would speak your words of life and of truth, of healing and of resurrection life, of transformation into our lives. So, Father, help us. Holy Spirit, empower us as we seek to understand the scriptures this morning, that you would lead us and speak into our hearts and our lives. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing unto you, our rock and our redeemer, Jesus Christ, our Lord, now and always. Amen and amen to that. So friends, on Thursday, the 21st of May, we as a church celebrated Ascension Day. I'm sure many of you were able to, to view the service. As we watched, as we celebrated, as we remembered, we, we joined with many of our Christian brothers and sisters from around the world and from many different church traditions and denominations. As we remember Jesus ascending back into heaven after having completed all that he came to do while physically present in bodily form while on earth. Friends, we, we remember the day that physically marked the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. The same Jesus that came to us as a baby born of Mary, who we received as a gift from God at Christmas. This Jesus, as he grew up and, and reached the age of about 30, entered into his public teaching ministry after being affirmed by God, Father and Spirit at his baptism and subsequent time of testing in the wilderness. Jesus taught for three years that the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe. As Jesus traveled and, and taught, he developed around him followers and, and core disciples. We call them apostles. Jesus' earthly and physical ministry was a ministry of reconciliation between God and people. With Jesus revealing God to the people and teaching them how to live in relationship with God and with each other. Jesus, God the Son, then made this relationship possible through his suffering and work on the cross. Jesus paid the price once for all sin, for you, for me, for all people. Jesus rose victorious over sin and death, which we celebrated at Easter Resurrection Sunday. Remember, we, we greeted each other with these words, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And Jesus then showed them, over the next 40 days, that, that it was all true, that he had risen from the grave and that he was alive. During this time, he, he spoke of and prepared his disciples to continue the ministry for the sake of the kingdom of God. Now, friends, that, that pretty much sums up our reading this morning from Acts 1 and John 17. But the question remains, what does this mean for us today as we seek to live as the children of God? Now, to begin to answer this question, we need to acknowledge that today is a special day in the life of the Methodist and Wesleyan tradition of churches. As Methodists and as Wesleyans, we remember Aldersgate Sunday, Aldersgate Day. As today is the 24th of May, Aldersgate Day. We as Methodists celebrate the birth of the Methodist movement in 1738. When Reverend John Wesley, one of the founders of the Methodist movement, records in his journal, and it's just a small extract from that day's journal entry, In the evening I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. John Wesley records in his journal an assurance of faith, an encounter with God that left him with an assurance of faith. 
In other words, a, a faith that has moved from his head to his heart. From something that he had known about and even taught others about to a lived reality within his life. This lived reality that his younger brother Charles Wesley three days early on the 21st of May 1738 had discovered. Both of these resulted in what would become the Methodist movement and which would later become the, the Methodist church, the church tradition that we're a part of. In our readings this morning, a clear theme emerges that the disciples, and I believe by extension us, are commissioned to be Jesus' witnesses to all the world. And I want to briefly examine this theme for us today as we, we look at Jesus' ascension and Aldersgate's experience of John Wesley and his heart strangely warmed and the assurance of faith in God that he had. So, let's, get, let's dive into it. Friends, in our reading from, from Acts, Acts 1 verses 6 to 14, we get Luke's account of Jesus' ascension. When he tells us in verse 6, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the time or date the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here looking at the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Friends, Jesus encounters his disciples about a kilometer outside of Jerusalem on the way to Bethany by the Mount of Olives. As the disciples encounter Jesus, he commissions them to be his witnesses. He tells others about, in other words, to tell others about who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for them and for all people. They are, are not to do this work in their own strength but through the, the empowering that they will receive, the promised Holy Spirit that will come upon them. And they'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to look a bit more at that next week on Pentecost Sunday. But Jesus then is lifted up into heaven as the disciples watch until they can see him no longer. And I love this part, friends, of Luke's account of Jesus' ascension. As the disciples stand there staring into the empty sky, they are suddenly disrupted by two angels, two men dressed in white, who stand by them and say, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Friends, these angels bring the disciples back to earth, by reminding them of the work that needs to be done. Luke then tells us that the disciples returned to Jerusalem and to the place where they were staying. And they joined together constantly in prayer, along with the woman and Mary, the mother of James, and with his brothers. Friends, the disciples were commissioned. And I believe that we have been commissioned to be Jesus' witnesses through the empowering that we've received through the Holy Spirit and in community with other disciples in Christ. But the question is, what, what does this look like? And what does it ask us to do? Jesus tells his disciples in verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I believe this is a call for us to share with others about who Jesus is. 
what he has done for you and, and for all people. When it comes to, to being the church today, I'm not just talking about the Methodist church or, or, or a Krugersdorp, Noetiev or Princess or around the connection. But many denominations and churches that are, seem to be non-denominational as well. I believe we, we love to be found looking at the sky. We, we worship God. We serve God. I mean, we, we can sometimes sing the songs without even looking at the screen or the, or the hymn books that we have. We, we sing songs of praise and of worship. Some of us are even get involved in, in serving as, as we feel comfortable and is comfortable for us. I have a fear that, that we've often forgotten what it's all about. And this is what the angel reminds the first disciples of when they say, men of Galilee, could we insert perhaps the Methodist church? Or well, let's come all churches together and call us the children of God. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Friends, we, we are reminded that we have work to do. The work of being Christ's witnesses into the world in which we find ourselves. But how do we do this? What, how, how do we, we actually do this? I believe Jesus helps us here in our reading from John 17. Jesus is teaching and preparing his disciples to continue his earthly ministry that he's begun. This is the night before he is arrested and his subsequent death and then resurrection. And the 40 days of, of showing the resurrection power. That he brings with him. As part of, of his preparation. Jesus is spending a moment in prayer. And that's what is recorded in our reading today. From John 17. Huh? And it reads as follows. And I, and I want to, to allow you to hear the words. As Jesus prays aloud to God the Father. Firstly for himself. And, and then for his disciples. And I believe by us the disciples. And us by extension. He prays. Father. The hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before. The world began. Friends, Jesus, as he prays, is saying that the work he came to do as God the Son, as, as the Redeemer, is now coming to completion for the glory of God. That he has made salvation and relationship with God in eternal life known and will make it possible. Jesus prays in verse 3, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. What does this look like for us, friends? Well, as Methodists, we have, as part of our, our understanding of salvation, what is known as the, the four alls. Firstly, all people need to be saved. Secondly, all people can be saved. Thirdly, all people can know that they are saved. And fourth, all people can be saved to the uttermost. As Methodists, we believe that, that all people need to be saved from sin and death. That all people are by nature dead in sin and that God has, has no favorites. We are loved equally by God. All of creation, all human beings are loved by God who wants all people to be in relationship with God. That this relationship with God is, is not something to be earned or achieved through good works or, or following religious rules. But as a gift from God. Which God has paid for through Jesus Christ and his work on the cross on our behalf. This brings me to the second or all, all people can be saved. Because of Jesus' completed work of salvation for all sin, once for all people, all people can be saved through believing in Jesus Christ and his redeeming work for our salvation on the cross. We need to accept this free gift of salvation, of redemption from sin and death 
by placing our faith in God's grace, God's undeserved favour towards us. Now Paul helps us understand this when he writes in Romans 10 verses 10 to 13, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So all can be saved. All need to be saved. All can be saved. This brings us to the third one. All can know that they are saved. And friends, this, this brings us to our, our, our remembering today of Aldersgate Day. When we remember John Wesley's assurance of faith, that he knew that his sins were forgiven, we too can enjoy this knowledge through the power of the Holy Spirit active in our lives. As we see God working in our lives, bring about healing and transformation of who we are into the image of Christ. This is often called working out our salvation. Or sanctification. All need to be saved. All can be saved. All can know that they are saved. And lastly, all can be saved to the uttermost. Friends, as Methodists, we believe that as we journey through life and grow in relationship with God, we develop in Christian love for God and for others. In our relationship with God, the source of this love. And as this love develops to a point of being the primary way of life, of loving God with all of who we are and loving our neighbours as ourselves, we begin to live out what the Wesley's called perfect love. So friends, we have a, a way of salvation. All need people need to be saved, can be saved, can know that they are saved and saved to the uttermost. We call that the four oars. But friends, we know Jesus, each of us at, at some point or another. And if you haven't, please reach out to me. So that we can have a chat about this. But there's a, there's a moment in which many of us have come into a relationship with God through the redeeming work of Jesus Christ. Where we've declared Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Let us begin living out this by being Jesus' witnesses to all people. Starting where we find ourselves with, with family and friends in our Jerusalems. And friends, this this can at times be the hardest, and these people know us the best. We then need to move into our Samaria, and we need to be witnesses, telling people about what Jesus has done for us and who Jesus is in our Samarias. That's the people that, that we don't like and who don't like us. Then we're told by Jesus we need to be his witnesses in Judea and to the ends of the world. This can be easier, but, but more daunting as we, we share about who Jesus is and what he has done with people we don't know. We need to share who Jesus is with people we don't know. But we know that God is there in those moments with us. And we need to take this gospel, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to all people. As we seek to live out our commission as witnesses for Christ. As we seek to live out the commandment to love as God has loved us. We need to love God with all of who we are. And we need to carry that love into our relationships as we, we share Jesus with all people. With that said, friends, let us, let us come to a moment of prayer as we end this time of sermon. God of steadfast love and compassion. You call us and send us to proclaim good news to all. Help us to show unusual kindness to all, particularly those in distress, by sharing the good news of your death and resurrection, by engaging all to follow the new life you offer, and by assuring them that you will, that you will be with them always. Father, we, we come and we lift up those who are closest to us, who, yet, who need to hear the gospel. Empower us through your spirit to share it, through the way we live and through the words we share. To those we don't like and who we know don't like us. 
help us to cross the boundaries that have been created, to share the gospel, to share your love in action with them and your love for them. To those we don't know, but yet you love Almighty God, help us to share about who Jesus is and what he has done in and with us and through us as we share them with the gospel of Christ with them. Father, we ask more of you. For we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen and amen. So friends, that brings us to the end of our service this morning. And I I want to encourage you to join us a little bit later at 10 a.m. if you're able on our Zoom Coffee Chat Connect group. Uh, the way to connect is Princess. You'll be, uh, you should already have your group ID and the password to be able to access in it. Uh, Nuitevel and Krugersdorp and anyone else who would like to join us, please do join us. Uh, finding the, the, the group and the password and everything on our Facebook page and in our WhatsApp info groups. So friends, do join us a bit later as we continue to discuss our sermon for today and also connect with each other as brothers and sisters in Christ in community with one another. With that said, friends, we come to the end of our service this morning. May you be blessed, may you be safe, and may you know the constant presence and blessing of Christ with you in this time and place. And may you know that he is constantly guiding us and directing us as we seek to, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God to be the witnesses of Christ taking Christ to the worlds and the places which we find ourselves. So friends, as we come to finish our service this morning, I'm going to ask that we bless each other with the benediction. If you don't know the words, they are on the screen. I've just put them up now. And we bless each other with these words. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Friends, be blessed, stay safe, and know that God is always with you now and always. Amen.